I, I ran it by my family, my whole family. Okay, what does your family all think? And my sister and my wife, and they all agree. Cause she's just wild. She's that. She just wilds out and does these things. So it wouldn't surprise me if she thought, "Man, I kind of want to fuck my nephew today. I'm a mess." Hmm. Hmm. Alex. Hello. Hey, Alex. How you doing? I am doing well. How you doing, Gek? It says here you think your aunt might have sexted you today. <laughs> well, so it kind of gave off the the feeling of it. So I guess some background. She's kind of uh, like she's cheated on my uncle before. So you know she's kind she, she's kind of out there. Hmm. And the text. Do, do you want to read the text? Sure. Let's hear the text. All right. So she texts me and she says, Hey, Alex, I got fired from my job today and I told, uh, insert my uncle's name, I feel like me and you should bond. All jokes aside, I'm a mess. That's the text? That's the text. <laughs> And it, okay, just, Alex. it just led me to believe the only time you would insert <laughs> I'm a mess and we should bond is if you're trying to cop a fill. I'm going to I'm going to throw this out here immediately. Okay. I think do. I I I think I I think something's going on with you that you're interpreting that text sexually. Interesting. Well, see, here, we're not very close. That's the thing. I, I don't really speak to her. So we don't have right. some sort of relationship. Right. But so here's my question. Why would... <laughs> okay, you and your aunt are not very close with each other. So it would make that sense that she wants to hang out with you, bond with you, form a closer relationship with you, especially, you know, if if things aren't going well with, with her husband, only because she wants to have more time with her family. And I'm wondering why exactly you think there is a sexual connotation here. I think it just has more to do with the circumstances. I think if she sent this text, I, it just has to do with, with I, I guess it's more of who she is, so the way I would take her, you know, like the way her perception is. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? What's your thoughts? Well, when you say you when you say that this interpretation that she is hitting on you comes from who she is, what is it about her that makes you think this is a sexual text? She's just wild. She's that. She just wilds out and does these things. She cheats. She's, you know, just kind of who she is. So it wouldn't surprise me if she thought, "Man, I kind of want to fuck my nephew today. I'm a mess." Hmm. Hmm. So you think? I mean, I ran it I by my. Say, you ran. You ran it by someone. I, I ran it by my family. My whole family. Okay, what does your family all think? And my sister and my wife, and they all agree. My mom really? said she was drunk when she sent the text, so I think that adds more to the equation. Your mom and your wife, and who is the other person? My dad and my sister. Your mom, your wife, your dad, and your sister, all of them unanimously think that your yes. aunt is trying to fuck you. <laughs> yes. Really? Has she ever? So okay, that's but, but listen, because I, I, I would say that look, cheating is one thing, but I I feel like cheating and incest are not in the same category. I don't feel like somebody that would cheat is also somebody that would uh, commit incestual uh, incestual sex acts. It's a tongue twister. Inse in 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 uh, well, how do you, Incestual sex acts. I think that was it. That was a good one. 
Thank you. But uh, I think she has a thing with uh, just blurred lines. You know, she's not blood related. It's my mom's dad's wife. I mean, my mom's brother's wife. Excuse me. Oh, okay. All right. This makes it a slightly more plausible. So it's your uncle's. You and your uncle are blood related, and this is your uncle's wife. Correct. Okay. All right. That's not as bad as if it was your blood on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. If I think if this was my blood related aunt, then I wouldn't have jumped straight to, oh, she's trying to uh, cop a feel. She's trying to okay. diddle me. Okay. No, that's important. But there's, I guess there's a lot more into it, into the equation. Okay. What else factors into the equation? Well, that, that's just it. There's all that. Hmm. Okay, so what's next here for you? Are you did you did you I, respond to this text? Well, see, that's that. This was what was next. I said, "Hey, maybe I should speak to a gecko to decide what I do next." I hmm. did not respond. You didn't respond. Okay. Well, I did not. What would be an ideal outcome for you? Do you do you want to spend more time with your aunt? Um, no, not at this point. Not at this point. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like it would make sense for you to leave the text alone then. Just leave it be. No need to yeah. kind of go further with it or tell my uncle. Is that a thing? Should I do that? You think it would? Like, here, here's your, my thought. If it was... Please, you, tell me your thoughts. If it was a different situation, say your best friend's girlfriend mm -hmm. was coming on to you kind of like that. Hey, I'm a mess. We should bond. I feel like you would tell your best friend. But when it's your aunt, you know, do you tell your uncle? That's different. That's a different ball game. What's your relationship like with your uncle? We're pretty close. Hmm. Listen, here's the thing, and I don't know your aunt, but I'm j I'm just I'm not sold that this is a sexual text. So you think there's a chance she was just <clears throat> drunk, a mess? I think so. I mean, I, I, I I'm a cop, but I don't know. I, I I take things at face value. If your aunt says that she wants to bond with you more, but then you threw in the thing about how she's not your blood aunt. And uh, that made the whole situation a little bit more plausible. But I would say that if you don't want to get involved with the situation, you might just want to leave the text alone. What does your wife think you should do? I don't know. I, mean, I think she said leave the text alone. Hey, babe, what do you, what do you think I should do with the text? Yeah. Nothing. She says nothing. Can I talk to her real quick just before we go? Yeah, you can absolutely speak to her. Mr. Gang. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Mary. Mary. Mary, I, I think it would be nice to get your perspective on this. Uh, I personally don't think that this text is, is giving off vibes that um, Alex's aunt wants to have sex with him. But uh, you you sound like you, you think otherwise. So... From what I can tell, me and my husband are recently married, so we've been married since October, and the first time I met her was at the wedding, and none of my husband's family really liked her, and everyone was kind of like standoffish about why they didn't like her, so then, you know, I kind of started to pry a little bit more, and apparently she has a history of kind of just cheating and not, not being there for the right reasons, and... It, it's hard to explain her personality because she's kind of shy, but it almost is like like she's trying to get something from you while trying to act polite. So I could definitely see why it like why everyone thinks that she does not have good intentions with this text. Mm, mm. All right, or would have you advised Alex to leave it alone rather than pursue this any further? 
Well, of course, he just wants to find out like, what it is so he can like, kill his buddies or whatever, which like, I really don't care if he does. Mm, but You think, I mean, okay, so I'm, you think, do you think, sec- okay, so you, you just brought up a very interesting element. Do you think that he almost secretly wants to interpret this text as his aunt wanting to have sex with him so that he can use it as a flex? See, I thought that at first. However, um, he didn't reach out to his friends first. He immediately went to his mom and dad because they don't like the girl. And that makes me think otherwise. And then once everyone else agreed, he sent it to his friends group chat and was like, hey, like, what do y'all think about this? And everyone was like, yeah, like, I, I, I feel like she is not asking for the right But he's kind of using it as a flex a little bit. To be like, hey, my aunt wants to have sex with Because guys, like, I, because, look, I feel like, you know, guys gain a lot of confidence just from, like, not even from, like, uh, 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 sleeping with women, but just from, like, knowing that they would want to. And is there something like that going on with him, but with his aunt? It's possible. It's definitely possible. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say... It's out of question, but I mean, I I don't blame him. I mean, it, it's just guys having fun. It's like harmless fun. Yes, if he kept agging on with the aunt, then that'd be a concern. And like, he's been keeping me updated with like all what his friends say, and like we've been laughing about it all day. So it's not. I don't. It's not bothering me in any way. But hmm. I mean, yes, I do. I do think he is trying to impress his friends in some sort. Well, thank you very much for uh, sharing, Mary. Can I uh, talk to Alex and we'll wrap it up? You can. Hello, Gek. Hey, Alex. How you doing? I'm well, man. I'm well. How are you? Listen, Alex, before we go, I want to br- bring up this sort of theory that Mary and I are talking about here. Secretly. Okay. Secretly. Do you consider it a flex that your aunt wants to have sex with you? Yes. Yes. Hey, thank you for calling, Alex. Appreciate you uh, sharing your story with us. Thank you, Gek. You have a great night. People, uh, People take what they can get in this world. Anything, anything to make them um, feel like uh, they're wanted, they're attractive. People will take it. That's the world we live in. That's how our brains work. So I fault no one for nothing. Hello? Hello? Hi, is this, uh, Hi. I'm gonna fuck up pronouncing your name, but uh, can I try? Can I try? And you can tell me yeah. if I did it right? Safe. Yeah, that's fine. Is it safe? Yes. I'm a genius. Um, <laughs> so how do people, because how do people normally pronounce it? Because people probably fuck it up a lot. What, what, what are the most common fuck ups of that name? Oh my god, I get so many. I get page, I get face, like like your face. Um, Wait, hold on, hold on. I get How do people where where how do people get page from Safe? I really don't know, honestly. I guess cuz they sound similar. I never understood it though, but I've been getting it my whole life. Well, listen, Paige, what's going on with you? Nothing much. I'm just watching your uh, stream. Mm. Mm. Well, listen, it says here you told a person this. You called a phone number. And a person asked you what you wanted to talk about. And you told them that you get nightmares. Every, you've been having nightmares every single night for your entire life. Is this correct? Yes. What is What is that like? Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> um, there, it's been going on since my whole life like literally since i was a child since like i was four years old um and they're like really intense and like gruesome 
They've been happening every single night without fail. It says you're 20 years old. They started when you were four years old. And has it been 16 years every single night of these nightmares? Mm -hmm. Every single night. <laughs> every single night. Yeah. And is it the same nightmare or are we talking different nightmares? Um, so some of them are the same. Like I've had some since I was a child and they'll be like exactly the same um, from years ago. But sometimes they're just brand new ones. Sometimes they're similar situations, you know. Um, so it's really weird. Tell me about the most reoccurring one that you've had throughout the past 16 years. Okay. So I am in this like weird mall and there's like, like an alarm going off, like flashing lights and people are like running to get out of the mall. And I am just like wandering around. I'm like seeing all the stores and stuff like that. And it's like a, it's like a normal mall, but like you could tell that it's off. Mm. And so I'm walking around and I get to the, well, there's some other stuff that happens, but basically I get to the roof and it turns out it was a zombie apocalypse and the zombies are coming through the door. I'm on the ledge of the roof and all my friends and family are down below, like on the floor, and they're telling me that the only way to stop the zombie apocalypse, apocalypse is if I jump off. And then Ooh. I end up jumping yeah. and waking up right before I hit the ground. Interesting. Okay, so you're dangling off of are you're dangling or you're like you're you're like standing by the edge of this roof? I'm standing by the edge. You're standing by the edge. Behind you is a horde of zombies. Below you is all your friends and family telling you to jump off the building and kill yourself. Yeah. Interesting. So how does that feel, like, watching all your friends and family tell you to jump off a building and kill yourself? Um, it's... It used to be, like, really, like like impactful to me like I used to like wake up and think about it like all day when I would get the nightmare but now since it's like kind of happened so much I'm just kind of like I, I want to say like numb to it mm. Mm. oh I have so many questions uh so oh my god I just forgot all of them um so how often does this particular nightmare take place um, probably maybe twice a month. Twice a month. Okay. And so yeah. you say you become numb to this. Does there become a point like, you know, you know, what lucid dreaming is right where you know that you're in a dream. Yeah. Every time now that you've had this dream so many times, has it become easy for you to recognize when you're in the dream? therefore giving you more control over it or, you know, allowing you to freak out about it less? Yeah, so as as I've gotten older, um, I actually, like, I have more lucid dreams now. So I, like, realize that I'm in a nightmare and I try to wake myself up. Um, like, in the dream, like, I'll pinch my arm. That's what I do in the dream. And it usually doesn't work to wake me up, but at least, like, I know that, like, I'm in a dream and I'm safe and I just have to, like, if it's, like, a reoccurring dream, I just have to go through what's happening in the dream so that I can wake up. Mm. Okay, so it becomes like clockwork. You're like, oh, I'm back in the dream. All I got to do is jump off of this building and kill myself and then I'm fine. Yep, exactly. Mm. But then, okay, so if you're in the dream and you know it's a dream and you know you're safe and nothing bad can happen to you, do you never, like, uh, try to make some alternate choices, like go back and start punching the zombies in the face or, like, uh, you know, run around or, like, uh, you know, try to start, like, maybe inching your way down the building or, like, using a, a 
find a ladder or something? Like, do you never make like alternate choices now that you know that none of them will will that, that they they all end with you waking up? Um. So I I've tried like in the dream like to make like different choices, but it's always the same ending. Like it always ends up. I guess with this one, it always ends up with me jumping off. Um, like no matter what I do, like even if I try to like, I don't know. There was one time where I tried talking to my family and friends from the room. Yeah, what, down what were they the like floor. when you were talking to them? They were like, it was. They were like hollow husks of themselves. Like they had no personality and. They just kept on saying, like, the same things over and over. Like, the only way to save everyone is if you jump. Like, there's no way to get out of this. Like, just a lot of stuff like that. But they wouldn't say anything else like that. And, like, they... I remember they were, like, pale. Like, they were pale versions of themselves with, like, like just blank eyes. So this nightmare, you say, is, is twice a month. So... How often is it a is it a fresh nightmare? Because this one, it sounds like okay, I've been through the motions. All I got to do is jump off the building, kill myself. I'm good. But uh, how often are you having to deal with nightmares that are new to you? Um, pretty much every other night. Um, I only just get this one. I don't know why I get this one a lot, but like other like re- repetitive dreams that i have like i'll maybe get them once every couple months so like really every other night is kind of like a new dream interesting i almost feel like uh and tell me if i have the wrong perspective here but is there is there anything exciting about that you're like oh I, it's like you're opening up a new horror each night but it's kind of I mean, you know, the the exploration of horror as a medium of entertainment is a very real thing. Do you do you ever look at it like that, or am I completely off? No, I. You're totally right because, like, I also do like free writing in my free time. Mm. <clears throat> so, like, I will write. Like, I think it's like kind of interesting because it's like, oh, I'm getting new inspiration every night. <laughs> That's how I kind of have put a spin on it now. Totally, totally. Um, yeah. So you will take these dreams and you'll transmute them into your writing. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'll try to write, like, even just, like, a short story about them. Yeah, um, yeah. Just, like, whatever happens in it, just try to get it down. Because it's kind of like journaling and it's kind of like, like, I like writing, so... It's like a little therapeutic. Um, I would but then totally I'm like, read. I'm happy. Oh, go ahead. No, it's okay. I was gonna say I would totally read a book called "The Safe Nightmare Journal." It's just, that's a Maybe cool title for a that. book. Yeah, do you have you ever thought about that? You ever thought about publishing a nightmare journal? Actually, yeah. Um, I I kind of have been thinking about like like you know, writing, like, a full-on book about it, because I don't really know anyone else who kind of gets this. Um, And I do think that it's, like, kind of interesting. I mean, I'm sure there's, like, people, um, like, other people, but, like, personally, I don't know anyone else who gets this, and everyone that I tell it to, they're, like, you know, like, that's really interesting. Uh, Obviously, it's horrible, but, like, (laughs) like, it's really interesting um, because there's no, like, real reason why I get it. What was your dream last night? Okay, so it's it was a little much, but <laughs> I can't remember how it started. All I remember was like the disturbing part that I was on a beach and I looked down at my foot and my foot like really hurt and it was like really like it felt really raw. So then I take off my flip flop and then it looked like a like a rotting fish corpse like just ripped open with like bones sticking out of it and like like just like what like a raw cut open fish would look like 
Your foot looks like that. Yeah. Mm. And how did you react to that? Are you not at a point? I mean, after 16 years, are you not at a point mm-hmm. where you see your rotting fish foot and you're like, ah, this is nothing to me. I, what, what, what else you got, brain? Come on. It's been 16 years of this. You can't scare me with anything. Or is it still each night, you know, a, a, a fresh hit to you? It still, like, it still feels, like, scary, and I I still get, like, nervous, and, like, I have a lot of anxiety about it, Um, even though that I know that, like, I know none of it's real, and I know that it's just my brain doing this to myself, Um, but, like, I still get that, like, kind of fear, you know, like, almost like that primal fear, because, like, I'm... Like, when you're asleep, you're, like, your most vulnerable. And so it's, like, if that's happening in my head, like, what's happening outside, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that that, uh, primal fear, you know, like we were talking about earlier, everyone, there's a lot of people out there who chase that with, like, horror movies and haunted Mm -hmm. houses and and whatnot. And and how, how successful have you been in sort of reframing your attitude toward finding a thrill from these dreams? Well, I'm not someone... I, I like, get very scared of, like, horror movies and, like, scary things. Um, So it's not for you. Like, I just always have... Yeah, it's just not for me. Like, yeah, I just don't like it. So the final thing I kind of want to explore with this is... Have you, what What have your efforts looked like, if any, to cure yourself of this? Have you ever gone to a, like, dream therapist or a, or some sort of mind doctor or, or something to find out why this is happening to you? Yeah, I've been to, like, I've been to a couple therapists. Uh, I'm on, like, some medication for it, um, but really like they no one knows what to do about it uh they don't know like how to help i try like i try taking melatonin i try you know doing a bunch of stuff um to try to like get myself to stay asleep and like maybe like if i put myself in a deeper sleep maybe like i won't experience the nightmare but nothing has helped um so I'm kind of thinking about maybe doing a sleep study and like trying to find someone else who can like maybe like a sleep specialist. I don't know if they have those there. No, I'm sure they do. Somebody who can like hook you up to some some wires or brain scanners or something and like look at the the neuro patterns (laughs) while you're while you're asleep. Exactly. Like, just, like, see, like, oh, maybe my body is, like, reacting to it. I don't know while I'm sleeping. Like, I'm sure, I know it is, because, like, I wake up in, like, a pool of sweat. Um, So, like, I know that my body is, like, experiencing the fear, like, physically. Um, So, I'm sure that, like, if I did a sleep study, they'd be able to, like, see, like, when my brain peaks or whatever. Do you think that there are anything do do you believe that dreams tell us things about our subconscious like like this recurring dream of you having to jump off a building because your family is yelling at you and there's a zombie apocalypse and this rotting foot thing like do do you think that these are completely random firings of neurons or are they trying to tell you something about what you subconsciously think and feel. I think some of them are like deep and like, I think some of them kind of are like a window into my subconscious. But I I think like some of them, like looking down at my foot and seeing like a dead fish corpse, like I I can't really get any sort of um, like anything from that. I I don't think there's anything really from that. I would be trying to tell you either. 
yeah. I guess like some of like the more in, like intricate and intense ones probably have like something to do with like my personality and my brain and what's going on in my head and but I'm I'm sure a lot of them are probably just like what what's a new thing that we could throw at her tonight, you know? Hmm. Hmm. And or, I mean, it sounds like you're getting better and better at dealing with this. I mean, every single night. I mean, that sounds sounds pretty exhausting. Yeah, I've definitely gotten a lot better with it. Um, like I I know kind of well, I know like how to like act in like a lucid dream. I kind of know like like if I sleep with in like a certain setting, you know, like in a cool room or something like that, then like I kind of not that it's like better, but it kind of is less intense than some other ones. Like so I kind of I know some coping skills to deal with it. Um but of course they're only like temporary, you know. Well, Saith, uh, thank you for sharing us. Uh, thank you for sharing this with us. This was super, super interesting. Is there anything else that you want to say to the people before we before we go? Um, I think everyone go buy little plush gnomes. I have we have so many in my house, and they're adorable and they make me very happy. So everyone should go buy plush gnomes. I like I like that. It's a very specific thing that I because everyone you know a lot of people when I ask them, oh, do you have anything else to say?" They go, "Everyone have a good day." It's like, well, what the, how, that's not something I can't do. That that's not something I can. Exactly. It's not really actionable. But I thank you for providing an actionable thing for the people listening. And please write the Safe Dream Journal. That is a cool name for a book, and I would absolutely read it. A hundred percent. I'll I'll dedicate it to you, Gek. Beautiful. Thank you, Seth. Have a good night. Or, you know, try to. You too. I will. Bye. The Seth Dream Journal. One one of these days I'm gonna be browsing Amazon and I'm gonna see that pop up. And uh hopefully there'll be a little the you know how they they know how they have they, they carve out one singular page of a dedication? Dedicated to the gecko guy on the computer. I forgot what his name was. But I would definitely read that book. Sasha? Hi. How are you? I'm pretty good. How about you? I'm a gecko on the computer. That sounds about right. Uh... What's going on? Not much. Chilling, hanging out, playing computer games, watching your stream. Sasha, it says here you want to know if you should be ashamed that you had to shit in a litter box once. Yeah, and I don't, now that I think about it, I don't know if it's so much that I should feel shame about it. I think my fiance's problem is more that I am seem proud of it. He's agreeing. Oh, so. Okay, this is a whole different call than I thought it was. You were asking if you should be ashamed. But I feel like the question is not, should you be ashamed? It's, uh, it, you're not ashamed of shitting in the litter box. You sound like you're battling well, the shame. Well, it was out of necessity. Well, well, okay, well, listen, listen. You sound like you're questioning if you should be ashamed for being proud that you shit in the litter box. That's that's actually perfect. That would be the exact way that I would explain the situation. I'm not okay, ashamed. Great. I'm. I mean, like I said, it was born of necessity, but I feel like that's wrong, and maybe I should be ashamed. Where okay, well, here let's 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 okay take this one at a time. Here, why are you proud of shitting in the litter box? I guess it was. I'm an inventive person, and I really did make lemonade out of lemons in, like, a really shitty situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, go ahead. Tell us. You say it's out of necessity. What was the situation? 
Uh, I lived up in the mountains with a bunch of people in a bunch of broken down trailers in Winnebago's. And, um, one of our friends had cooked for the night and they cooked chicken. Um, but I guess that they didn't cook it all the way. And I've, up until that point, I had never had food poisoning from eating raw chicken. Um, but I obviously, um, it struck me that night. I was sharing a Winnebago at the time with my ex-boyfriend who I had just broken up with and his cat was living with us. So it was the three of us and a Winnebago that didn't move that had a bathroom in it, but the toilet and the shower were broken. So um, it was like maybe two or three o'clock in the morning when the motion started to hit me. And so um, there was one working toilet on the property but it was like at least a quarter to a half mile walk uphill to get to the working toilet. Um, and I just, there was no time there. It wasn't going to happen. Um, so I, and the litter box didn't, I say litter box lightly. It, it, there was no litter in it. There was dirt in it. Um, so I grabbed the litter box, put it on top of the toilet in the Winnebago and I had to shit in the litter box. I also had to turn around and throw up in the same litter box. Um, I mean, it wasn't graceful, but it was better than using the broken one inside the Winnebago. So, I, I mean, so, I could have gone outside. I, I I agree with the with the the sort of first sentiment that that you echoed here, which is that you are proud of yourself for your ingenuity, for your ability to be a problem solver. And I agree with you, Sasha. Sasha, when you had to take a shit, when you had to throw up, you did not complain that the toilet wasn't working in the Winnebago? Is that what you said? The toilet wasn't working in the Winnebago? Yeah. The to You did not complain that the toilet wasn't working in the Winnebago. Um, you did not freak out. You kept calm. You had a you you searched not for further complaints, which you knew would uh, result in nothing, but rather you they're just waste time. They're a waste of time, and you're a solution oriented person. And my God, Sasha, I think you should be proud of that. I think you should be proud of that. I don't think that there's any shame in the pride that you have for your own problem-solving initiatives. That's just my perspective, but that's where I, I mean, stand. It's mine, too, but my fiancé just... I, I guess he thinks that I shouldn't talk as much about it to people. Listen, dude. I, 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 think, I think that your fiancé, for whatever reason just doesn't appreciate this aspect of you. That's fair. But I think he should. You know, because it's uh it's a great quality to have in a person being solution oriented. Yeah. I don't think it's that I'm a solution oriented. I think it's that I tell a lot of poop stories openly to people that are like just they don't even have to be like close family. I could be like coworkers or people that I'm chatting with and I just I happen to just not have shame about bodily functions. They're a part of life. I, I society ta makes so many things taboo that are simply facts. People have sex with each other. Exactly. People take shits. They have diarrheas. Everybody they get poops. high. Um, they people they people murder each other. That's that happens. You know, That's but we true. make all these things taboo. I don't know why we do it, Sasha. But props to you for doing your part to uh, remove the stigma. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to start looking at it that way. Anything else you want to say before we go? No, you just keep doing the good work that you do. I'll be calling back sometime. Thank you, Sasha. Have a good rest of the night. You too. Hello, is this Kellen? Yes, it is. Hello. Kellen, what's going on, man? 
not much. Just watching your stream and waiting for my turn. <laughs> well, wait no longer. Your your turn has arrived. And um, here it is. It's right now. It's maybe never happen again. Uh, what would you like to do maybe with not. this turn? Um, first of all, I want to say I'm a huge fan. And also I have call anxiety, so you'll have to excuse me a little bit. Oh, I'm a huge um, fan of you. You have call anxiety? What is that? By the way, okay, hold on. I've talked to another caller who said that they have call anxiety. And they told me something. And I don't know if it's the same with you, but they told me something that I found really interesting. Which is they said that they don't have, like, normal social anxiety. Like, they, like if they're talking to someone, like, uh, in person, it's fine. But specifically on the phone, they feel anxious. Is that you, or are you sort of a... Uh, a 360 anxiety guy. Uh, so that's actually uh, kind of a funny thing. I do feel the same way. Uh, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety, but mm. I don't feel as anxious talking to people like face to face in person. It's usually when they can't see my facial expressions or my body language that I feel very anxious. Interesting. I would. F I, I. I. I mean, I know you. I mean, I know there's no logic to the brain. But I feel like it would make sense that if people can't see your face or body, it only makes it better. Like, because I can just do whatever I want here, you know, and uh, it's fine. But, but anywho, anywho, enough about enough about life. Uh, 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 Kellen, Kellen, how would you like to use your turn? Uh, so my, uh, my brother watches, uh, you a lot. He watches, uh, your TikToks and your streams and stuff. And I guess I, uh, wanted to tell him something through, uh, this stream that I kind of feel like I'd never be able to tell him to his face. Cause my brother's one of the only people I get physical anxiety with. Um, me and my why brother were always get, very um, close growing up. Why do you get physical anxiety from your brother? Um, he's kind of like a, a parent to me, almost. Um, he kind of raised me when we were growing up. Like, I, I still had my parents, uh, but they were divorced and they were both, uh, my parents are mm, something. <laughs> so my brother was the one that was there for me, uh, taking care of me and stuff. So I guess I just get a lot of anxiety because I don't want him to think badly of me and I, I don't want to disappoint him by just being who I am, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so go ahead. I, I, I interrupted you by asking you a question. I want to let you talk. Um, I guess I just really wanted to say that, like, I'm, I'm really grateful for my brother. And even if we argue and stuff, he, he is kind of like one of my best friends in the whole world. Um, his name's Evan. He's, he's a very good person and he's taken very good care of me. We do get into arguments a lot because all siblings do, but I, I guess I just really wanted to tell him, but I can't tell him face to face, which is that I appreciate him a lot. And he is one of my best friends in the whole world. And I really don't know what I'd do without him. Interesting. So he listens to this podcast. So you're saying this so that he'll listen to the podcast and he'll hear you say it. Yes. So why do you feel like you can't tell him this uh to his face um so my brother's a very tough person like he's uh he's one of those people where like if you cry in front of him or something like that he'll he'll just get up and leave because he's not very good with dealing with emotions and i understand <laughs> that so i don't want to like dump that on him like i'm laughing because person. well i'm laughing because i feel like a lot of uh this po this podcast is like you know people talking about all sorts of shit, so it's funny to me that he uh, 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 doesn't like people expressing themselves when that's sort of a lot of what uh, goes on here. He mostly uh, he mostly watches. I will admit for like the funny the funny poop stories uh, and stuff that like too. that. There's but a lot of that too. I feel it's like maybe he should get interrupted by his younger brother giving him some love. Well, that's very sweet of you. That's very sweet of you. Um, hmm. 
Okay, so so you feel as though you have a hard time connecting with him because he's uh, he's not very uh, uh, emotionally available, perhaps. Yeah, um, and I, I do understand because, like I said, our parents growing up, um, both of our parents have always been a little emotionally unavailable, so I can definitely see where he gets it from. And I do notice a lot that he's more emotionally available towards me than other people, but I guess my thing is I mostly just don't want to overload him or give him the impression that I'm... <laughs> it's going to sound weird. Like I want to give my brother the impression that I'm... A strong person like he is and that I can do the things he can do and I guess just I don't want to overload him with me being an emotional person hmm this is interesting you sound like you have a lot you know I I, I respect that I respect that you uh it's good it's good to get into uh, a practice of telling people how you feel about them, I think that's nice. I, you know, we, th- we've had a lot of discussion <coughs> about uh, you know how short life is, and there's been a lot of mortality talk this evening and whatnot. Uh, and I feel like part of that is to recognize that uh, you know whatever we don't have a lot of time left on this earth, and while we have people now. While we're here now, it's good to let people know how you feel about them. So I I don't think that there's a weakness to that. I think there's maybe even an inherent strength to that. Uh, Because you're right. It feels a little corny. Telling your friends you love them. Telling uh, your brother you love them. You know, they'll be like, what are you, on drugs or something? You know, are you on a fucking (laughs) ecstasy and that's why you're acting so weird? You're like, no, brother, I, in sober mind, would like to tell you that uh, I appreciate you and I love you. And, uh, I mean, even me acting you out right now saying that, I feel a little weird. Um, But whatever, we push through that because it has to be said, even if it's a little uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, I I really appreciate it. I guess I guess my other thing was that I I also kind of guess I with all the existential talk I kind of also wanted to tell him something else I would never feel comfortable telling him face to face because we're both going through a struggle which is I used to be in a very dark place where like I kind of not necessarily I wasn't like I didn't want to off myself like I just didn't want to exist. Um, Mm. and I, my brother was the one that kind of showed me like, Hey, life is, you know, a lot more worth living than just, Oh, life is crap. And I don't want to live it anymore. Like he's the one that showed me everything gets better and you're going to get better friends in the future and you're going to have a better life. It just takes time. And I guess right now I'm seeing him kind of go through the thing that I was going through and Mm. I don't know how to be there for him. Like he was for me, because since Mm. I'm such an emotional person, and he's not very much an emotional person. He has the ability to just be like, not necessarily, he never told me to suck it up. He just told me like, it gets better. And like, you will be emotional, but it gets better. And I just don't have the ability to say that because I'm a very like, I'm the kind of person where I'm like, it's okay to cry and be emotional. Get it out, do it. You got to do it. And he's very like, if you have emotions, just not necessarily keep it in, but don't force it outwards. How old's your brother, can I ask? Uh, he's 25. He's six years older than me. Okay. That's just I'm about to turn 19. <laughs> um, hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, so your brother supported you through all this shit, and now your brother's going through some shit, and you're like, ah, how do I, you know, you're, you're, you're like, ah, I don't know if I have the tools to reciprocate, Um, but your yeah. intentions are there. Your intentions are there. Hmm. I have a I have a couple thoughts that I'm like thinking about right now. Part of me wants to say like, all right, well, you your brother showed you uh, what he you know your brother sort of gave you his perspective that's a little bit more stoic than yours. Um, 
and I'm I'm thinking maybe maybe this is an opportunity to show your brother uh, a little bit more of your perspective and see if he's open to that. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how open minded he okay. is to to your line of thinking. But I would say this. Uh, even if you don't feel like you can reciprocate directly what your brother has done for you to your brother, you know, like say that you're too intimidated or or you are going to say some stuff to him and you don't feel like it'll get through to him, right? Maybe if you feel like like reciprocating what he gave to you back to him is a lost cause. I don't know if it is, but if yeah. that's how you're feeling, uh, you're in luck because uh, what your brother gave you, you don't necessarily have to reciprocate it back to him, right? Uh, yeah. You can, you can, you can give that energy back to anyone, and that can be a form of reciprocation, right? You can, you can pay that forward to anyone in your life, you know. Uh, fucking strangers on the internet, uh, your friends, whoever it is. So you could think of it like that. Like, all right, my brother helped me out when I was going through some shit. Uh, and if he's not going to be open to me helping him out, whatever, I'll find a way to pay it forward to someone. And get this, uh, you can do it in your own way, right? So if that's your philosophy and your truth is you're the kind of guy that has uh, you know you have your own philosophy that you believe in that it's okay to cry it's okay to feel whatever 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 your your uh mantra thing that you have to say is uh you can find someone whoever it is and uh pay it forward like that right doesn't necessarily and that and that yeah. and that can sort of be your way of reciprocation even if your brother is not into it does that make sense yeah it does that's actually that is really good advice because i guess i feel like i also have a responsibility that you know my brother did that for me and i kind of feel like someone did that for me you know, even if it wasn't my brother, that someone did that for me and I should be able to do that for somebody else. And I guess knowing that being there for my brother in general and that I don't necessarily have to pay it forward to him specifically is mm -hmm. a lot of weight off my shoulders. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think because uh, like you can't like the way you got to you got to you got to sort of recognize this is, this is sort of, you know, my final thought on it is like. Uh, how your brother reacts to you or how open your brother is to the things that you have to tell him is not within your control. It's not within your control at all how your brother reacts or yeah. how your brother is. This is not in your control. Uh, your efforts and your intentions are in your control and you have good intentions, it sounds like. Uh, so I would take that shit that is isn't you, within your control and do what you can in, in, in that arena. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I think that reciprocating that to other people is totally in your control. So just focus on that and not like focusing on getting your brother to come around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, Kellen. Well, that was some very, very good advice. I hope so. I'm doing the best I can as a gecko on the computer. I don't know anything about life. Uh, I'm 14 years old. And um, I I actually, before I started streaming, I, I uh, went to the bathroom. And I, uh, when I took my, uh, I, I had a little pee on the tip of my penis. And so I like shook it. And it got a bunch of pee all over my gecko pants. And then uh, I oh no, and so I had and it was pretty like dense, so I went oh it was some dense upstairs. pee on the pants oh god and now and now I'm here talking to you with a little bit of a uh, a little bit of pee on my pants. 
you know what, though? That's how life is sometimes. Sometimes you just got to talk to people with a little bit of pee on your pants. Beautiful. Talk to you soon, Kellen. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Someone said I need to wash the suit. I'm not washing the suit. It's too much work. And I am lazy. Hello? Hey, what's up? Is this uh, Jeffrey Conrad? Yeah, this is him. Uh, normally, it doesn't give me the uh, first and last name, but you have you have told the call screener both your first and last name. Yeah, well, uh, the current name is uh, pretty powerful and where I'm from, so uh, that's kind of why I give it. You said your name is very powerful where you come from. Yeah, so uh, we, my dad uh, and my uncle own a, a dairy farm, and we were actually featured on uh, SNL. You were featured on SNL? Yeah, so it was a very short skit. The uh, The guy who does the uh, Daily News kind of gave like a very short, just kind of like one-liner about our, our farm. Oh, you were on the Weekend Update? Yeah, pretty much. What do you remember? I, what I kinda, the line was? Yeah, so they uh, they pretty much said uh, a uh, farm in uh, Northeast Ohio has recently installed water beds for the cows, and then they also said uh, this just in: uh, their farm has also introduced uh, three ways for their cows, something like that. How did you introducing water beds for your cows get to the point where it became news? Uh, so I want to say either CNN or Fox came by and just kind of did a thing about it. And um, my uh, my dad and my uncle were just just happened to be there. You know, it's they they own the farm, so they uh, they kind of did a bit about it and. Uh, you know, Fox and CNN, they just kind of ate that shit up. And um, I guess SNL got a, a huge thing about it and uh, made a tiny skit about it. So I, I think it was pretty mm. funny. You know, every time I, mm. I bring it up to somebody, they I think it's pretty funny. And did this bring any sort of notoriety to your family and their farm? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, just any time I bring it up to somebody, they just – I just uh, – tell them that we were featured on SNL. It's just one of those kind of small things that's just kind of funny, and people usually laugh about it, so. Hmm. Hmm. Did did this little this this little taste, right, of being in front of the camera, getting a little attention on yourself, did it not feel good? Did it spark anything within you to, to uh, seek after more news coverage or more notoriety? for yourself or your farm? So, um, I kind of take this from my, uh, my dad and my uncle. You know, they're very uh, kind of self-raised kind of people. They, uh, so I didn't really like seek any fame for it. You know, I was kind of young when it came out and uh, my dad and my uncle just kind of, they just uh, made short fame of it. And then since then, I, uh, I don't know. It's just kind of cool. Just one of those things, just uh, just to say to, yeah, we were featured on SNL. They didn't really say us by name, but I don't know. I just, just a conversation starter. So you're a farm boy? Uh, sort of. I mean, I, after I uh, went to college, I just kind of went to, uh, uh, went off to, or uh, went off and did some engineering stuff and kind of broke away from that. Hmm. And what are you doing now? You're in engineering school? Uh, no, I so, so I graduated and now I work at an engineering firm. By the way, it says here that you called in because you wanted to talk about playing Monopoly. Yeah. So wh- wh- what are your what are your takes on uh, landing on the go space? Do you take 400 or you just take the 200? Oh, is this one of those house rules? Yeah, I guess. I mean, we were, we were just playing some Monopoly, and we were 
having some drinks and we, we were just kind of discussing. They were calling me a pussy for asking for 400. But I was like, you know, that's just kind of how I've always, always played. I think, you know, here's the thing. I think when it comes to Monopoly, if you're going to be incorporating any sort of house rules, you have to set them before anything happens. Because nothing's more annoying than creating rules as you go. Because what'll start to happen is you'll be creating rules that work primarily in your favor, right? Like, you have to set the, if I land on go and I collect $400 rule, you have to set it immediately. Because if you set it only when you land on go, people are going to think something's going on. Which, you know, I would agree with. I I would think something is going on. Right. And I think that that kind of happened. You know, I was starting to drink before the game started. And then uh, when I landed on go, I was like, oh, so I get 400? And they're like, nah, you're a pussy. You get 200. No. I was like, no, no, oh, no, no, no. I guess that wasn't a part of this conversation. No, that, see, that's the thing. Is you, this, this, is, this is a uh, great example of the necessity for uh, clear, honest, and open communication. You must set the ground rules for the game. At the very start. Lest you be okay. reasonably accused of uh, manipulation. Right. Right. Which is uh, very fair. So I definitely understand that. But uh, a little butt hurt that I, I didn't get my extra 200. But, uh, Let that butt hurt. You know what? You know what? It's okay to be butt hurt. It's okay to be butt hurt for a little bit. But... Your butt hurtness needs to drive you further towards learning this lesson. So, so really, Absolutely. really feel your butt hurt and let it serve you so that next time to avoid your butt hurt, when you go to play Monopoly, you will set your rules from the beginning. Yeah, I, I completely understand. And uh, like I said, calling, we were Jeffrey. drinking beforehand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely, man. Take care. I hope you have a great night. You as well. I've never slept on a waterbed before. I wonder what it's like. Seems a little dangerous. Because if you're, like, flopping around on there... A threesome on a waterbed feels like it would eventually lead to some form of leakage. Feels like there is a lot of potential for multiple fluids to be intermingling in a situation like that. Like, let's say there's a hole in the waterbed through which uh, uh, liquids can enter but not leave. If you have enough multi-person sex, or even if you have enough standard two-person sex on a waterbed like that... Eventually, after a few months, you'll be sleeping on a cum and piss bed. Which, who knows, might be very comfortable. I gotta get a water bed.